Hey Nerdy Knitters! In this video we're going to learn how to make a round dishcloth just like this. You might have seen some of these. You might have found some in your great aunt's cupboard or your grandma's drawer. It's a really popular common pattern that's been around for a long time. And now it looks like it might be complicated. All of those holes and the weird wedge shape. What exactly is going on here? Well you're going to use short rows to create this shape. It's knit flat in 14 little wedges and then you seam them up together. I'm going to walk you through all of the steps and how to make this from start to finish. Be sure to stick around because I'll show you how to properly seam the edges together and give you a tip if you don't really like the bulky seam that you get because you do get a little bit of a seam right there. If you don't like the look of that bulky seam I'll show you what you can do instead to eliminate that. So let's go learn how to make this round dish. Now to complete this pattern you'll need the instructions and you'll need some cotton dishcloth yarn. I like this brand right here. It's really soft and easy to use. But you can also find things like this at your big box store and that will work just as well. I just prefer the Knit Picks Dishy because it's a little bit softer, not so hard on the hands. You'll also need some, need some knitting needles. I'm using a US size seven. Double points are short enough, they'll work just fine or use your favorite needles too. Here's a closer look at the dishcloth you'll be working on today. It's actually knit flat. Each of these points is one repeat of the pattern. And when you've worked 14 of them, you have this. And your last step is to seam that edge together. You can see the seam right here on this one. It's not a hard pattern to work. It's very simple once you understand how it's constructed. So let's look at that. Here's the instructions right here, and I've already worked one point. That's the first point all done. So you can see what it looks like. You'll find a copy of this pattern down below. Just go to the video description and look for the link, and you can click it and download a copy for yourself. Now let's discuss what's happening here in this pattern. It's 10 rows. You work 10 rows and you form this. And then you'll repeat those 10 rows. 13 more times. The one thing to be aware of after you've started is to pay attention to your right side versus your wrong side row. This is the right side row with that point facing off to the right. So if you ever get confused about where you are in the pattern, the right side means this is pointing off to the right. The short row shaping can be confusing and that can get people turned around a little bit, but you'll see as we go along. So we'll start working the pattern. Our first row was a wrong side row and we knit. I've already done that. I'm on row two. It says to slip one with yarn in front. I have the yarn in the front and when a pattern tells you to slip, you always slip purlwise unless it says otherwise. And then I need to knit three. Yarn over. Knit eight. And you'll see I have not finished my row. I still have two stitches left. Now this is where we get the term short row. A short row simply means you are not working across all of the stitches. You are stopping at some point, turning your work, like it says here, turn your work, leaving those last two stitches unworked. And that is a short row. Something that is a very common problem for new knitters is they accidentally pick up their work after setting it down and work across the other direction. But it can also be used intentionally to create shaping. And in this pattern, it creates these little wedges. Each of these wedges is made with short rows. See, it starts out narrow and it gets wider and wider. That is because of the short row shaping. So we've turned our work, we left those two stitches unworked. And row three tells us to knit to the end. And you should now have 15 stitches on your needle. It's a good thing to keep track, check every row. This pattern is small enough with a few amount of stitches so you can check and see to make sure you have enough stitches after working each row. And finishing across. We finish and we turn our work after working all of the stitches this time. We've worked right back to that edge where we're creating our points. And there you can see. Stopping here and not working these stitches creates that wedge shape. 
we get more stitches over on this end, more of the rows. And that's where the term short rows come in. And then we repeat this. The next row, we're slipping again. Knitting three, yarning over. This time we're knitting seven. And now you can see there are four stitches left over here. Last time we had two, but we worked a yarn over and now we're, we have that extra stitch. So now we're leaving four stitches. That's another key. If you look at the pattern here, you leave two stitches unworked, you leave four stitches unworked, you leave six, you leave eight. So there are lots of clues here that will help you stay in pattern. You just have to look for them. Like our first right side row, we knit eight. This right side row, we're knitting seven. Then we'll be knitting six, then we'll be knitting five. So every right side row, we're knitting slightly fewer stitches and leaving more stitches unworked. Just look for those while you're knitting. So we leave those four, we turn our work, we knit back. So this pattern is not complicated. You just have to pay attention and look for those little clues. Every time you're knitting one less stitch across those right side rows and you're leaving two more stitches unworked. So just pay attention to that every time. So our next right side row, we slip our first stitch, bring the yarn to the back, knit three and yarn over, that stays the same. And this time we will be knitting six stitches and leaving six stitches unworked. And then we stop and check. We've got six stitches here. You can see between each one, we get a little gap. That's common with short rows, but we can leave them in this pattern. This is just a basic pattern. We'll have little holes from working those short rows. And we knit back across our stitches. This is a good introduction to short rows. There are more methods for working them, but at the basic level, this is really all they are. You stop working before you get to the end of the row, you leave stitches unworked, and you turn your work. Okay, so we are on row eight now. Slipping, knitting our three, Yarning over and knitting five this time. And that means we will have eight stitches left unworked. Oops, how many was that? There's my yarn over, three, four, five, two, four, six, eight. So you can see our short rows are getting shorter and shorter as we go. We started out way down here and now they're just getting shorter and shorter. We turn our work we knit back. Okay, so we did our final one. Knit to the end of row, we did that. We should have 18 stitches, so stop and count. Yes, that's correct. So now our last row gives us our little point right there. We're going to bind off four stitches just as you would any regular bind off and then knit to the end of row. So we'll get back down to 14 stitches. So to bind off, we work our first two, pull the first one over the second. That's one bound off, two bound off, three, and four. Okay, so we've bound off four, We'll work to the end of the row. And you can see where those short rows were coming up right here. See right there, that big space in between those stitches? That's where we turned and worked back the other way and it leaves a hole. So we're just going to treat them as normal stitches and work across. There's the next hole. It just adds a little extra space between some stitches you can see here. 
We're not going to do anything about that in this pattern. We just knit right across. And that is the end of our second point. So that wasn't so bad. You can see it right there. So you'll repeat this until you have 14 points. And then you'll have something that looks like this. And after you do your final row, you'll bind off all of those remaining stitches. And we'll get to the next step, which is seaming these two edges together. Now, before we get to seaming our dishcloth, I just wanted to pop back in here and say, I believe you can be a confident knitter, but it comes with understanding what's happening on your needles. And with this pattern, you need to be aware of where you're turning, what stitches you're leaving, how everything works together, even which side is the right side and which side is the wrong side. There's clues to all of this, but you really have to learn to read your knitting to understand them. If you agree, be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you like to get nerdy with your knitting. Now let's learn how we can seam those edges together to finish off our dishcloth. But before we move on to seaming, I want to just mention quickly one little thing. All of our right side rows were slipping that first stitch. That produces this little edge right here. I think it just looks like a nice finished edge. But it's not necessary. In this pattern, I didn't slip that edge. And you can see that's what it looks like instead. So you have a choice. You can slip that first stitch, knit three and yarn over, or you can just skip slipping it, knit four and yarn over. Both will give you the same dishcloth. It will just be that edge. That will look slightly different depending on which option you choose. But you'll find all of that in the notes for the pattern as well. And one more tip, if you're having a hard time telling which is your right side and wrong side rows, remember that the points are always leaning off to the right but you could also use a little clippy marker and just clip it to a few stitches on the front of your work so you'll know that's the right side. Another thing that can help you if you've put this down you're not sure where you're at is to count the stitches. Each row you'll have a different number of stitches so you can check and see where you are in the pattern by looking at that. If you have 17 stitches and you know you're on the right side row for your next row then you've just finished knitting to the end and you're ready to start row 8. So use those clues, the stitches on your needles, look at the yarn overs, those should be after the fourth stitch of every right side row, and remember to count your stitches. You'll be knitting eight, then seven, then six, then five, and your short rows will be getting slightly shorter, two, four, six, eight. So just look at the clues, look at your knitting, start to understand how this pattern works. It's not that hard. Short rows can seem intimidating, but you just look at your knitting, look at your clues, and you'll be able to figure this out quite easily. When your dishcloth is done, you've finished all 14 points. We're going to seam these edges together. Now this isn't what's referred to as a normal mattress stitch seam, where you're seaming two edges together. You're actually seaming two the cast on and the bind off edge together. This is the bind off edge, this is the cast on edge. So we're working them just like that. To help explain how this is going to work, I've got a little diagram. Each of these V's represents a stitch. This one from our bind off, um, yeah, that's our bind off row, this row right here. There are our cast on stitches right here. And if you look closely, you can see the V, there's a V, there's a V. Each of those is a stitch, and that's what these Vs are here. And we want to work into the Vs that are right along the edge of that bind off. You might have to pull your bind off up to look for them, but you're looking for those Vs. And the same on our cast on edge. If we held it like it normally was, we hold it this way, we want to pull that a little bit and look for those Vs right there. But to bind them together we're flipping them over. So now those V's are upside down. But what we can do is move it over by half a stitch to line them up so it looks like our stitches will be all lined up. And what we'll be doing is working into the middle of the V's on one edge and working between them on the other edge and that will help them line up. To start Place your edges together 
Okay, so I've got my two edges here lined up. I put my cast on here and my bind off here. But you can flip them if you want, as long as they line up. The first thing we're going to do is start with the stitches that were bound off. We're going to just go through this one loop. There's probably one loose loop along the edge. And if you look, you can see the V is just to the left of that. So you'll insert your needle from back to front and draw your yarn through. Now I'm just using a plain old tapestry needle and I'm using dishcloth yarn. Of course, you can use the same yarn, leave a long tail, and you can just use that to seam these edges together. I just want you to be able to see this, so I'm using a different color. Okay, we have that in there. Our next step is to pick up the bottom piece, our cast on edge. Now we're going to look for our first V. And remember, we're inserting into the V and coming up through the next V. There's a V there, so this is our first one over here. And of course, it's a bit tricky to find, but we'll pretend this is a full V here. And we're going to come up through the V right beside it, right through between the legs. There, now we've joined them together. So once you're in that, once you find that first stitch, you're basically following the path of the yarn. I'm inserting from front to back, right where that yarn came out, and I'm coming up on either side of that stitch, trying not to split a stitch. You can see between the stitches, there's the V. I'm coming up on the other side of that. Pulling it through. And then we go back to this one. If I've inserted in the correct place, I'm just going to insert in the same place and this on this piece I'm coming up in between the legs of the next stitch, right in the V, right there. And you just repeat that, oh, get the tail out of the way, across the row. Go back to this one, insert where that yarn is coming out. Look for that V, pull my cast on edge away, right there, around the stitch on this one. Back down here. That's all there is to this. You just have to look at your stitches around the V and into the V on this one. And what happens is it looks like we're creating new stitches, which is what we're doing. If you look, it looks like another row of V's and we're lining up our stitches. So you'll continue to do this across the row until you've seamed all of your stitches. Then you have a choice. You can sort of wiggle them around so they're about the same size and then weave in your ends. But that does have a tendency to catch, especially where it's a dishcloth. Your other option is to zip it closed, just like this. If you haven't snagged any yarn and you can pull on the ends. Oh, and there you go. It closed it right up. You can see it on the other side. But uh, it does create a bulky seam right there. You can see on this finished one, you can really see how bulky that is. This was one of the first ones I did, and it's a lot neater now. I can see already I've improved a little. If you don't like that bulky seam, you can work your cast on edge a little bit differently. Let's go back and look at this. You can work this provisionally. You can cast on using waste yarn or something like that and leave that cast on edge live, which means those stitches aren't closed. And then you would knit your whole project and you would leave your last row live. You would basically graft those live stitches, both ends. Let's say these were live. We would graft them together and create a whole new line of seams like we did with the mattress stitch, but we wouldn't get that bulky seam. It would replace that bulky seam and it would just look like another row of knitting. So that's an option too, but if you're just starting, start out with the seam. It's good practice because you'll want it later on once you'll start knitting sweaters and garments. You'll want to know how to seam your sweaters. And there you have it. You know how to knit around heirloom dishcloth. You know how to work short rows and you'll learn how to seam. That's lots of new skills for one little dishcloth. 
Be sure to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and be sure to subscribe if you like to get nerdy with your knitting.